Hello everybody and welcome back to the series. Welcome back to our epic quest across Europe to win every top flight division in the European nations in the game. We have just arrived in nation number 25, I think, uh, which of course is Scotland. If you remember at the end of our last episode, we did win the Serbian title with Vojvodina. Uh, it wasn't too long before I got a new job, uh, the pre-season basically. Uh, <laughs> For, for for Scotland, uh, the Voivodina season, new season, hadn't kicked off. We did make some signings before we left, though, uh, to try and leave them in a good place. But Scotland, anyway, uh, let's see who we've become the manager of, shall we? That's right, guys. Welcome to Motherwell. We have become the manager of Motherwell. None of the big boys, i.e. Selkin Rangers, uh, neither of those became available. Obviously, finishing first and second in the league pretty much every year uh, makes it pretty unlikely that the manager is going to lose his job. The first job in the top flight that did become available was Motherwell, so we, we obviously jumped at the chance. Uh, we, we, at least we're in Scotland, you know, we can always um, either try and win it with Motherwell and break the Celtic Rangers domination over the division or move into one of the big boys if, if it becomes available while we're here in Scotland. Uh, but anyway, in a move which is sure to spark plenty of heated debate, like it always does whenever I get a new job, uh, Dean Talentai has left Voivodina to join Motherwell. Talentai arrives with a record of 1,452 wins, 371 draws and 396 defeats in his career. He's also won 32 league titles and 21 cups across our career. We're well in our 90s now, guys, so we are getting pretty old. Uh, apparently, Stuart McDonald was considered to be the favourite for the job, particularly after he was spotted at attending an interview at the club, uh, but they ultimately preferred a different candidate, i.e. me. Obviously, Voivodina will now be looking for a new manager. In terms of the club itself, they are predicted to finish in ninth place according to the media. They do have one since Premiership title to the name. I'm not quite sure when it was. Obviously, we will find that out. I think it's uh, 1932. So, around about 150 years ago in our save. <laughs> so, a very, very long time ago. In terms of the squad, we'll meet them in a minute, like you know, like we we normally do. Uh, the board want us to um, they they want us to finish in mid table. They also somewhere want us to develop the best there it is the best youth, best youth system in the country. Uh, reach the latter stages of the cup, uh, the Scottish Cup that is, and also reach the latter stages of the Premier Sports Cup. So we've got two cup competitions here. Right, so having a look around the club then uh, you can see here we're on the home screen I haven't done the kits for, for Scotland they, they're a licensed kit within the game uh, so I don't need to do them they're already there that is the official kits from from last season now for, for Motherwell uh, Playcare as the sponsor no sponsor on the away shirt not quite sure what that is uh, but yes uh, 1932 in fact it was 150 years ago uh, the last title we're in 2082 now I, I think I'm 96 96 <laughs> 96 years old um uh, average training facilities youth facilities are good excellent youth recruitment which is good you, junior coaching could do with being a little bit better obviously if they want us to be the best youth academy in the club one thing i'm so excited about it being in scotland guys it is some names i can pronounce hopefully <laughs> watch me get them all wrong now now, when I was looking through the clubs in Scotland, I did notice one thing, and that is finances. And Motherwell are actually in one of the better places financially in the club. You can see Partick Thistle there in debt. Rangers massively in debt, £10 million in debt. Uh, St Johnston have got some money, which is good. St Mirren are in debt. Uh, Aberdeen are in debt. You've also got Celtic with £13 million in debt. Dundee probably the richest club in the in the country uh, to be honest Dundee United are in debt uh, we've got Hearts who are again fairly fairly well off in terms of Scottish terms Hibs debt Greenock Morton in debt and then you've got us who's who's got a little bit of money in the bank so I'm not quite sure why all the clubs in Scotland are, are so much in debt you can see that we're under the wage budget let's in fact let's click on the finances screen we've got 1.2 million pound in the bank at 900,000 pound transfer budget we've got about 10k to play with 
in terms of the wage budget as well, which is okay, I, I, I guess. Um, we've got no no debts, which is also good. Sponsorship, how much sponsorship do we bring in? A reasonable amount, a reasonable amount. Affiliates, now this is something that I keep forgetting to show every 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 new club, really. We have got a lot of affiliate clubs. We haven't got a senior affiliate here in Scotland, so that's, that's not too much of an issue. In terms of the squad, though, guys, let's have a look. The best player at the club is Ainsley Brayson. He is an Englishman, valued between £13 and £14 million. Pound. A left winger slash right winger can play either side. Uh, inside forward on attack on the left is is pretty decent to be fair he's, he's you know fairly good been at Motherwell his entire career goal output's a little bit low for my liking but 27 year old Englishman Ainsley Brayson that can do a decent job for us there next best is Roddy Ballantyne defensive central is he a ball playing defender yeah, yeah, he's okay, okay. Uh, 25-year-old Scott, formerly of Man City and Liverpool, never played a game for them though. Only got 34 senior appearances in his career. At the age of 34, he is injury prone as well, as you can see there. Uh, and he's currently injured, which <laughs> is uh, he's, uh, three weeks and two months with a hip injury. Suffered in May, so he's already been out for a little while as well. Fairly decent defender though. Next best, we've got Junior Rainford, a Jamaican striker, centre forward. Uh, Trequatista, it's uh, pretty much of a, a rare role, but he can play as an advanced forward. Could do with in a little bit quicker, finishing a little bit better maybe. Uh, he's got 107 in 257 appearances throughout his career though, which is actually pretty decent. Of course, 88 of those have come for Harbourview, who are a Jamaican club. So slightly different in Scotland, 6 in 32, uh, but expecting him to do a job for us. Yeah, could could be quite decent. We've all then got Josh McLaughlin, who is another central defender. Again, fairly decent, formerly of Wraith Rovers, valued about what, one and a half million. Thirty years old, a little bit aging as well. Uh, now, of course, we are going to meet the rest of the squad when we uh, do our first game. Uh, looking down this column here, though, uh, we have got a lot of, shall we say, older players. Yeah, older players. <laughs> so. Uh, we've got, what about potential? Who's our highest potential player? Is that is Kieran Lamy, a mid-centre attacking mid-centre. Potential to convert him to a Segundo Volante. Tackling's a little bit low, though. Uh, but, yeah, we, we'll see how that one goes on in terms of potential. How, how old was he? 20-year-old Scott. So that could be quite decent. In terms of where we're predicted to finish, guys, uh, the media was ninth, uh, like I said. In terms of this, which I think is slightly different to the media, it's actually eighth at 201 to 1. Celtic favourites, Rangers, obviously, to finish second. In terms of pass winners, you can see here we've got Celtic, 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 Rangers. 20 years of Celtic, Rangers, loads of Celtic, Rangers. Right? So, yeah, the last time a team that wasn't Celtic or Rangers... Uh, won the title uh, was when Alex Ferguson was managing Aberdeen <laughs> the year I was born was the last time that anybody other than Celtic or Rangers won a Scottish League title that is quite drastic the last time we finished in the top three was what 20 26 no we've got 47 35 years ago, last time we finished inside the top three uh, at Motherwell. That could be uh, could be interesting. Now, as far as I'm aware, the, the, the league in Scotland is normal. But then I, I looked at this. We've got 38 games, but the league splits after 33. And then there's six teams, five games. Each t each team plays each other once. I mean, does it, do we just play the, the top? If we're in the top five, do we just play the... the Sorry, the top six. Do we just play the top five clubs? Uh, I'm assuming that's the way it is. Decent prize money for getting in there. You're right, you know, Champions League football, Europa League football. We'll have to see the, how that goes. In terms of when we're going to come back and uh, meet the squad properly and do, uh, do a fixture, it's going to be Partick Thistle on the 1st of August. You can see here that I do have the Premier Sports Cup Group G to play through. Uh, in between, we've also got a testimony for, for Niven. Uh, who is uh, a backup striker for us, 31-year-old uh, Scott, actually looks fairly decent himself as an advanced forward. 
128 goals in 367, 69 in 249 for Motherwell. Uh, could be could be quite decent for us. But I'm going to go do this pre-season now, guys. Do this Premier Sports Cup Group G, and we'll come back and we'll do that Partick Thistle game. Right, guys, welcome back. We've made it to uh, we've made it to Partick Thistle. Uh, we've played through the the Premier Sports Cup group stage. We've also made a signing since uh, since obviously you were here. And we've made one signing, and that is in the centre of defence. Uh, apparently, we've made two. Uh, no, that. That was already done before we got here. We've brought in Cal Shaw, though, from Queen's Park, a central defender. Uh, again, slightly, well, I was going to say slightly on the older side. I would look at his appearances there, but he's 27. He's on £7,000 a week, though, uh, which is a fair old whack. We paid £1.1 million for him. His value has already doubled at least, but he's a very, very good central defender, and he's actually gone in. Uh, I don't know why it's gone to defender right there. You can see his natural position is a defender centre. I don't know if that's something in my settings or something like that that I can change, but not sure. But anyway, Cal Shaw is here. A very, very good player. One thing which I didn't go over when we were here, of course, uh, in the rules is registration rules and stuff like that. Uh, there's not really any. There isn't really any. There's nothing about foreigners or anything like that. Obviously, we've got all of the work permits and the Brexit stuff and all of that sort of stuff and it's already stopped me bringing a coach in by the way I couldn't get a work permit for him uh, so we'll have to see how that goes while while we're here but there's no actual squad registration rules or anything like that I don't have to play Scots I can have a full team of Brazilians if they all get a work permit which is, which is good you know the, the nice relaxed sort of rules it's just getting them into the country that's the issue how the Premier Sports Cup Group G went anyway, it went fantastically well. Uh, we beat Stranraer 7-0, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. Huge, huge result in our first competitive game as the manager of Motherwell. Hat-tricks for Brayson, two for Rainford, which was good. Falkirk, we, we were expected to win this one and we sort of had to rescue it and it went to penalties, but it still counted as a win for us which in terms of the group gave us two points instead of the usual for the three or one for the draw. Kilmarnock, we beat them 3-0. Junior Rainford on the score sheet again. We also picked up a couple of injuries along the way. Here you can see Brayson uh, and McClung. Uh, both of them are, are our inside forward on the left. McClung was the, the backup to Brayson. Uh, both got injured. Uh, and then we beat Livingston 2-1. So we have been drawn against Dundee United in the second round. But of course, we're here to start the league campaign season preview after signing Cal Shaw we've we've took 50 off our odds we're down to 151 still in eighth place though but equal with St Mirren uh, so again we're just gonna have to see how the season goes and uh, obviously do the best that we can you can see the media dream 11 we've got eight Celtic players and three Rangers players so uh, that's, that's just the way it is in Scotland it's the way it is in real life guys <laughs> you've seen the last time a club other than Celtic Rangers won the league was in the it was in eighty five. Obviously, we're in twenty twenty three now, so that's uh, thirty eight years since it's last happened. But let's get into the Partick Thistle game, shall we? We're at home, which is good to start with. Ten thousand eight hundred tickets sold out of thirteen thousand six hundred, which is not bad. Uh, and this is the lineup that we're going to start the season with, with obviously not including our injuries to McClung and Brayson. Ballantyne's also injured. So the goalkeeper is going to be Liam Duncan. He is 32 years old, which is a decent age for a keeper. Uh, he's also a fairly decent keeper, which is nice to see. He's made plenty of appearances for the club. Yeah, good player. Happy with him. Right back is going to be Mark Luke. Uh, as a wing back on support, could be better, could be better, could be slightly quicker, could be slightly better at crossing and dribbling, but again, not too bad. Cal Shaw is a slightly better right back, and that may be what happens when uh, Ballantyne is, is back from his injury. Cal Shaw may go over to the right back position, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but it is going to be Cal Shaw starting in central defence today, although I've just noticed that his crossing and dribbling are even worse. <laughs> so maybe that's not going to happen. Uh, it's going to be McLaughlin. As the other central defender today, we've already seen McLaughlin, 30-year-old, decent player, happy with him. Left back is going to be Meathen, I think it's Meathen or Medvin, 23-year-old Englishman. Again, can't dribble or finish, could potentially be a centre-half. 
uh, again, that's sort of maybe is an area for improvement. Considered to be a championship player, really in in Scotland. Defensive midfielder on defend is going to be a Joan Gulluz, a Colombian, thirty four year old, slightly aging. Natural fitness is really good though. So is his bravery. Defensive attributes are good. His pace is gone though. Uh, now, one thing I did see in, in, in a comment for one of my videos, my tactic video for the tactic I use, is it's actually happened today. Uh, so that's today in real life. You might not see this for a couple of weeks. Um, is somebody recommended instead of playing a defensive midfielder, play as a halfback, which could be something that I look into. It's it's not too dissimilar, really, in terms of their attributes, but I might look into that at some point. Segundo Valente on the right-hand side is going to be a David Burns. As is Gundo Valente, he's pretty decent. Pretty decent. Get away with that. Could maybe do with being slightly stronger. Finishing slightly better off the ball as well. A little bit better, but uh, again, not too bad. Another one of the slightly aging midfielders. He's also transfer listed. We've promised him that we'd uh, sell him if a team came in with a bid. We're going to start on the left-hand side. We're going to start Kieran Lamy. Uh, we've got him training to play as that Segundo Volante there. You can see that he's not really played too much in pre-season, so he's lacking a bit of match fitness, but he is massive potential, and he's he's pretty decent as that Segundo Volante, other than his tackling. Everything else is, is really good, but if he can improve that tackling, uh, it would be really good. Wood starts on the right-hand side. Fraser Wood, a 33-year-old Scott. So again, we've got some uh, some age issues going on here. Inside forward, agility's good. Pace is still good. Slightly better finishing and composure could be uh, could be key. He's had a, a decent Premier Sports Cup though, two goals and three assists in three appearances uh, is is good. On the left hand side, it's third choice Stuart Roberts, twenty seven year old Scott, as an inside forward on attack. Again, not too bad. Plenty of agility, finishing again a little bit poor. And up top, it's going to be Rainford going to start for us today ahead of Niven, and hopefully he, we can pick up that. Uh, pick up the result so as we get the game underway in scotland in the scottish cinch premiership it's uh it's partick thistle coming forward inside the second minute it's campbell on the right hand side finds gaston with the ball towards the back post headed clear by shaw though uh, wood can't get there ahead of sims it's back into it's deflected off the crossbar and mclaughlin boots it clear i think wood completed the clearance there that would have been a, a little bit of a shaky start to, to life here in Scotland, wouldn't it? First highlight for Motherwell, it's Luke on the left, uh, the right-hand side, sorry, finds Burns. Luke with the ball into the box, towards the back post, and Roberts. It's, uh, it's a penalty. Uh, I completely missed that. We've been given a penalty. Gaston was too aggressive towards Roberts, apparently. Uh, it's going to be Junior Rainford to take the penalty to get us underway here in Scotland. And he's, it's a great penalty, right in the bottom corner. That's his sixth goal of the season already, and we've only just kicked the league campaign off. So that's uh, that's good going for Junior Rainford. And we're up and running here in Scotland. It's uh, it's a good penalty, good penalty. Kick-off highlight straight away, though. It's Campbell finding uh, Jeans. Jeans striding forward a long way. He's gone... F Whoa! <laughs> I think he was a little bit disappointed that uh, Patrick Thistle conceded there. I'm so excited about the fact I can pronounce some of these names, though, guys. They're English and Scottish names. I can say them. <laughs> I can say them. Um, I'm so excited about that. Uh, we're approaching half time, though. I'd, I'd argue that Partick Thistle have been slightly the better team here, and we're, we're sort of just building up into things. But uh, with 42 on the clock, it's Shaw finding Burns to Luke on the right hand side. Looks to take a pass. No, comes back inside to Burns. Gives it back to Luke. Can Luke deliver the... That's a great play by Luke. Looking for Lammy in the middle, but it's a little bit of a mix-up in the defence there. And Rainford's had an effort, which has been... Oh, okay. I, I Again, I thought it was just deflected behind for a corner. But Rainford with a free kick. Looking for his second junior. Rainford gets his second goal of the game. Another set piece for the Jamaican. It's a good free kick. I, I still don't know what actually happened for us to to be given that free kick was it handball on the block or something like that uh i didn't quite catch it uh, apologies guys but at half time it is 2-0 to motherwell junior rainford with the double that we we picked up massively as that half's gone on which is uh 
which is good. We started off very, very slowly. Wood with the corner on the right-hand side towards that near post. Headed clear by McKnight, though, and Gaston is the one who picks it up, looking to get away, but Burns does really well, gets back to him, finds uh, Meathen to McLaughlin. Galoos to Luke. Back to Shaw, into Burns. Galoos again, Wood. Luke, nice crisp passing here from Motherwell. It's down the line to Wood. Rainford's in for his hat-trick. He's put the ball in the back of the net. And it's an opening day hat-trick for Junior Rainford in the league. Uh, we might have to make some substitutions here. You can see we've got Lammy who's uh, struggling a little bit. We might bring Rainford off now that he's got his hat-trick. See if he gets a standing ovation from the crowd. It's it's really good pass and play by Motherwell, though. Good ball in by Wood. And Rainford just got a tap in, really, for his hat-trick. Still, we're coming. Uh, Meathen on the left-hand side finds Gullers Roberts. Ball into the box towards Wood. Headed clear though. Johnson helps it further on, but it's going to fall at the feet of Galuz to Burns. Meathen on the left-hand side. Into the area. It's blocked. Cleared by Gaston, but McLaughlin should win that header. He does. It's forward towards Pratel, who's gone for the overhead there. Pratel newly onto the pitch for Lamy. We've also brought Niven on for Rainford uh, for, the, for the final half an hour of the game. Deep free kick to be taken by Niven towards that uh, danger area there. It's headed just over the bar though unfortunately for Motherwell, but we can't really complain uh, too much with the scoreline, guys, and the performance. We did start off slowly, uh, but we've, we, I think we've been the better team so far. Maybe it's a little bit fortunate with some of the set pieces, but the fact that we've managed to score three goals on our opening day of the season, it's going to be man of the match there for Junior Rainford with his hat-trick. It looks dominant in the end, really, doesn't it, for Motherwell, uh, despite that slow start that we did have. So, confirmation, guys, after the opening day of the season. Of course, there's only been three games, so only six out of the 12 teams have played so far. But we do find ourselves sat on top on goal difference over Celtic, which is uh, its just a good start, really, isn't it? It's a good start. It's always nice to get off to a winning start. And we're currently undefeated as the manager of Motherwell in, including pre-season, I think, seven games now, which is... Uh, is is really really good hopefully more of the same but that's all for today guys we're going to come back a third of the way through the season so round about 12 13 games in uh, and see exactly how we're getting on but uh yeah motherwell guys we are now pretty much on home soil scotland's only an hour and a half up the road for me so uh not too far away it's um yeah it's it's nice to be back of course next nation we've we've got it loading as well which we're going back to europe guys it's back to uh to austria i think is next but let's get Scotland out of the way first. Thank you very much, though, guys, for watching, as always. Uh, please remember to hit that thumbs up button for me. It does help me out massively. I, do, I hate asking for it, guys, but it does It does really help me out. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't ask. I, you know. Let me know what you think of Motherwell. How, how well do you think we can do? Do you think we can get into those top five places? Uh, challenge for Europe? Do you think we can maybe challenge Rangers uh, for that second spot behind Celtic this season? Let's just see how the season goes. Like I say, we'll come back a third of the way through the season, though, guys, and see exactly how we're doing. Take on a couple of games then uh, and just generally check in. But, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Cheers, guys.